Welcome back to our microlearning course about checklists in general aviation. The course consists of three short modules. Hopefully you have already completed module one on checklist basics and module two on the effective use of checklists. This is module three which deals with modifying or creating checklists. It is not essential but I recommend that you view the modules in sequence. Let's talk about modifying or creating checklists to meet our needs. Once we accept that we can benefit from using checklists, we can go about creating checklists that work for us as individuals. There aren't right and wrong answers as long as the checklists aren't technically flawed. But a critical element is to make sure that as we revise existing checklists or create new ones, we're careful. We must test our checklists before we rely on them. The airlines frequently revise their checklists, but they thoroughly test them in simulators before they put them into use. They also use a group of experienced pilots as well as tech reps when doing revisions. We probably don't have access to a simulator for our airplane like the airlines have and we don't have a staff of tech reps from the manufacturer for consultation. But we don't have to go it alone. This makes for a great group activity. Invite a few pilots who fly the same kind of airplane to gather on a Saturday morning or an evening. Invite a maintenance technician who is familiar with that type of airplane also. Hammer out some ideas. Not everybody has to agree because checklists should suit the individual, but the group is more likely to find flaws in the checklist than a single individual who created it. What format works best for checklists? Well, to a large extent, that is a personal choice but is affected by the number of checklists, length of the individual lists, and complexity of the lists. Things that have to be considered in deciding on a format include readability. The font must be large enough to read well in turbulence or in reduced lighting conditions. The ability to handle the list easily while flying the airplane is important. We should strive to find a format that allows one hand operation most of the time. The material must be durable enough to last through repeated handling. Regular printer paper is nice and light, it's cheap and easy to use in a home printer, but it won't survive more than a few flights. Thin cardstock is more durable and can usually be used in a home printer. Heavy cardstock is better, but usually won't work well in a home printer. Of course, sheets can be printed or laminated inexpensively at most office supply stores. A big consideration is where will the checklist be stored in the airplane. Something that will fit in a side pocket is usually preferable, but other creative solutions can sometimes be found. A personal favorite of mine is to use Microsoft Word. Normal checklists can be plain black print on white paper, but for emergency checklists I can create the checklist in a table with a white background then I can change the page background to one of the default textures, which is red stripes. I can do the same for abnormal procedures checklists, but use yellow stripes. I will print on both sides of the paper as needed. I like to use 8.5 by 11 paper and fold it lengthwise. That makes it easy to handle and store in a side pocket. I print on thin cardstock, but the checklists are also on my computer so I can revise or just replace as necessary. Tablets are becoming very popular. I mentioned earlier that major airlines are now approved to use tablets on the flight deck. If the tablet is something within your comfort zone, I don't see any reason why you can't put your checklist on a tablet. But just like any other piece of electronic equipment, make sure you can use it properly and that you have sufficient battery power. It might not hurt to carry paper checklists as a backup. Develop a format that works for you or for your group. That brings up my first important point. Checklists are like shoes. They must be suited to the individual if they are to be used effectively. One size does not fit all. You have now completed Module 3, Modifying or Creating Checklists. Hopefully, you have already completed Modules 1 and 2. If you have not completed Modules 1 and 2, Links to all the modules plus more aviation safety videos can be found on GeneBenson.com.